Now, the fact that you'll turn into an animal if you fail to fall in love with someone during your stay here is not something that should upset you or get you down. But even then, you must be careful. You need to choose a companion that is a similar type of animal to you. A wolf and a penguin could never live together. Nor could a camel and a hippopotamus. That would be absurd. Hi folks, I'm Ignati Vishnevetsky. And I'm Alex Dowd. We're here this week on our beautiful new AV Club set. Welcome to Film Club. So there are two new movies in theaters starting today that I think would make a pretty excellent double feature. One of them is the new film from Dogtooth director Yorgos Lanthimos. It's called The Lobster. And the other one is the new Ben Wheatley film, High Rise. So The Lobster stars Colin Farrell, almost unrecognizable, actually. He's put on some weight for the part. He's wearing these sort of unflattering glasses, big, bushy black mustache. And he plays this recent divorcee who is sent to this seaside hotel that's also this sort of mandatory singles retreat. Uh, the film takes place in this sort of alternate reality where you're required to be in a relationship and you have 45 days that you're allowed to be single. And when that period of time passes, and if you haven't found someone, you're basically transformed into an animal of your choice. In a process that is never explained. No. They, I mean, they, they never explain how it actually to, happened. There's like speculation at the hotel and it's very horrific. <laughs> I don't think that, that question really matters because the movie also keeps adding more and more absurd rules. So Colin Farrell is very, very funny in this film in a way that I don't think we've necessarily seen him before. Well, he's playing uh, a shy character. Yeah, which he's playing this introvert, fun. basically, which is not something we see from him too often. He's done comedies before. He can be very, very funny. But he's just going so incredibly interior in this film. And the transformation is not just physical. And again, this is like the dumpiest Colin Farrell has ever been allowed to look. I mean, they put him next to John C. Riley, And that's how good the illusion is, that you could set these two side by side and they look of a piece, you know. Mm -hmm. He's really good at delivering this insane, lobotomy patient, deadpan dialogue, mostly because I think he plays it pretty straight. But he's also, is quite affecting. I mean, he's funny, yeah. but it's also a very affecting performance. And I feel like the ending, which is a little enigmatic, mm -hmm. I was surprised by how moved I was by the last minutes of it, considering how much of it is layered in deadpan irony. Right. There's this shift from our main setting, this hotel setting, which is just this endless source of deadpan comedy. We sort of shift into the surrounding woods. And the film's series of metaphors shift in that moment. And I think it loses something in that second half. I think this world of the loners, as they're called, mm -hmm. and these are the single people who have resisted uh, forming couples who've run away, they haven't been turned into animals, they live in the woods, they wear ponchos. Their world is, it's funny, but it's not, uh, it's not as sharply it doesn't conceived. provide as many kind of opportunities for jokes, but it also, this is the moment when the Colin Farrell character, he meets a loner played by Rachel Weisz, and I feel like that really gives the film a trajectory, mm -hmm. because at first, First, as funny as the lobster is, and as sort of as unexpected as all the stuff that happens, and it seems, it, it seems a little facile, because it seems like the joke is about how people are pressured into relationships and into forming couples. But I feel like once you actually get the central relationship, it becomes a little bit more complicated. I mean, I, I think basically <laughs> he's dealing with the idea that society pressures people into being in relationships. It pressures people into having their autonomy. The, the, the loners have their own set of bizarre rules because ultimately what it, it comes down to the idea that even people who have decided not to couple off are subject to expectations as well. If there's a central allegory here, it's about how we just struggle to understand these things on terms other than the ones that we've been given by the society that we live in. The characters completely accept these absurd rules, and because of that, they can never understand their relationship in anything except the absurd the rules that, the, that society the, the has rules given them. that these two kind yeah. of competing societies have given them. Yep. So there's there's another film that's coming out it has so much in common, though it's actually very, very different. And that, that's High Rise. That's a, it's a Ben Wheatley film, also an absurdist dystopia. It's an adaptation of a cult novel by J.G. Ballard, originally published in 1975, and it sort of it keeps to the 1970s setting. It's set in this super modern 40-story apartment building just on the outskirts of London, as it collapses internally into 
basically a post-apocalyptic wasteland. High Rise is a movie that sort of starts already at a nine of insanity yeah. and just goes up from there. Because I mean, the, the reality that we see at the beginning of High Rise when supposedly- Everything is perfect and it'll- The social it'll, structure is in order mm -hmm. is already very strange. And you're already having these sort of bacchanals in this 1970s High Rise building. Mm -hmm. And the class structure is already in place. It's almost like it sort of takes the train in Snowpiercer mm -hmm. and sort of lifts Basically, it. Basically, yeah, just stands. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Outside. I exactly. mean, that's exactly how it is because you've yeah. got the poorest living at the bottom, yep. the richest living at the top. The difference here, I think, uh, with Snowpiercer, you have, the, I mean, the structure of the train is is the plot, yes. right? Snowpiercer is constantly pushing forward from one set piece to another. But High Rise isn't structured that way. High Rise often barely seems to have a structure. I feel like High Rise just sort of goes on at a certain point. And once we've sort of gotten the central idea that these social structures, that even if there was some sort of revolution and that there was anarchy, Key, society would just fall back into these structures. So at a certain point in that film, you're seeing everything collapse into violence and into anarchy, but the roles that these various characters have fallen into are maintained. And I felt like I got that about 45 minutes before the movie was over. But didn't you enjoy the, the fact that it kind of went on? The style was very intoxicating. Yeah. I haven't really connected with anything Wheatley's made before this, and this is a huge step forward for him formally and conceptually. They're sort of their changes of pace for both of these directors, The Lobster is Lanthimos' first film in English. Mm -hmm. High Rise is noticeably made on a somewhat larger budget than any of Wheatley's yeah. other films. These are both movies that are fairly openly allegorical, but they're also set largely around a single luxury building mm -hmm. that is meant to sort of represent the worst of society. Mm -hmm. I mean, these are films that are in many ways completely dissimilar. What makes them interesting is so different, but they have so many things in common on this conceptual level that I think a discussion of the two of them, it's inevitably gonna turn into kind of a list of similarities. I feel like it is important to think about how they handle tone very differently because they're both movies that handle violence and often quite grim violence in a very dead way. Grim and white. very offhand. I mean, that's sort of a hallmark of Lanthimos's career at this point. But um, also Wheatley's, whose, all right. whose films have also always been quite gruesome. But Wheatley, Wheatley's violence tends to be more stylized. Mm -hmm. In Lanthimos's films, it's sort of treated as these black comic punctuations. Mm -hmm. In The Lobster, there's a scene where someone attempts suicide and sort of fails miserably, and that becomes this dark joke and this punctuation. Mm -hmm. 